very interesting space right now. Uh, the big shift is towards cloud computing. Uh, I manage some IT guys. It's very interesting to see the impact on these guys who are used to having a tight grip enterprise security and uh, how it's creating a bit of a panic in some ways. The fact that people like me, executives like me, are looking at outsourcing all this stuff to companies like Google. Um, not only is education just uh, based on utilities and security, but also on applications as well. Google Apps, as you can see there, is adding thousands of companies daily. Even Microsoft is moving to the cloud, even though a huge part of their bread and butter is with their office applications. The city of Los Angeles just migrated 40,000 of its employees to Google Apps. Um, so did the city of Orlando as well. So you can see that there is obviously a shift happening in the, uh, in the that space in terms of IT. Um, Zoho is another company that's offering very similar cloud-based uh, work productivity applications. Uh, and then Amazon S3 is quickly becoming the standard in web services simply because the bandwidth and storage costs are very cheap and their uptime is great. So it's putting a lot of pressure on executives who are looking at ways of saving money and still being able to maintain great services. And uh, again, in IT, another big shift is the move towards LAMP stacks. Uh, it's kind of interesting because when I started off, everything was Microsoft. And now a lot of those Microsoft users are having to learn Linux and Apache and MySQL and so on and so forth. And even Apple is getting into the cloud. Um, Apple has reportedly been setting up a billion dollar server farm in North Carolina. And they also acquired the digital music startup Lala, which is basically a cloud-based music service. And so the speculation is that they will be iTunes.com. Okay, so what does it mean? for us here in Canada. Well, there's some great opportunities because we've actually got a pretty good track record here. Uh, one of the advantages we have is access to the US market, obviously. Uh, there's nothing stopping us from launching the next YouTube. Um, and just so you know, uh, by this year, online ad spending in the US is expected to rise to 23.5 billion. Uh, worldwide, it's gonna grow uh, from 19.5 billion in 2005 to 55 billion this year. So it's obviously a great opportunity, not just in the US, but around the world. And uh, what's really interesting too is that if you look at the categories, I mean, Canada is actually one of the fastest growing online ad markets in the world, which is why a lot of companies are setting up shop here, including Facebook. Uh, we're growing from two billion market in ad spending US uh, last year to 5.1 billion in 2013. And the annual, um, compound growth rate is 23.5%. So it's one of the fastest categories in the world. And this chart shows uh, the various categories where money is being spent. Um, this is kind of stuff that we analyze very closely because we try to actually align our editorial towards where people are spending their money. And by Facebook standards, we're number one, or at least in the top 10. In terms of users, we're number three behind the US and the UK, and we're almost three times uh, the closest number four, which is Turkey. And now in terms of penetration, we're number one, as you can see. Uh, it's very interesting, almost one third of Canadians are using Facebook, which is uh, makes complete sense because what else is there to do during a long Canadian winter but <laughs> penetrate? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, hardcore Facebook users. Um, so yeah, opportunities also include our track record, as I mentioned. Um, we've got a really good startup track record here. There's Flickr, Stuart Butterfield, and Katarina Fake from Vancouver. They sold it to uh, Yahoo a few years ago for about 33 million, and now Katarina is doing Hunch.com based out of New York, and Stuart is basically just kind of spending his money and having fun. Um, and then there's Now Public, which was started by Len Broly, a serial entrepreneur in Vancouver, and also, um, a couple other guys that, that I actually know and work with, and they acquired, were acquired by uh, examiner.com for 25 million, which is not a massive exit, but you know at least it gave an ROI to uh, their investors as well. And a couple companies I think will be acquired uh, this year, just simply because they're doing very well, is FreshBooks, an amazing product, great, great company. And uh, there's a, another company very similar called Mint that was acquired by Intuit, that makes Quicken for a pretty high valuation. So I think that fresh books, I'm sure that they're being looked at by some big players. And then out west, there's Nexopia, which is based in Calgary. It's a social network for, uh, for teens as well. They've had very good growth. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if they get acquired. So I sent an email 
uh, a while ago to this guy named Fred Wilson. He's kind of a famous venture capitalist, and um, I know him from way back in the 90s. Uh, he's based out of New York, Union Square Ventures. And I just asked him, you know, what, what do U.S. investors think of Canadian companies? And he just said point blank, you know, we've got a very good reputation with, uh, with U.S. VCs. So people like Sequoia, one of the most prestigious VC firms out there, are very accessible. You know, you can actually get to them pretty straightforward. There is a, a one small caveat, which is that U.S. investors generally like to invest in companies that are within an hour of flying time. Now, there's one really interesting opportunity that we have uh, as Canadians is pretty unique actually, and it's with green IT. If you look at this chart, at the uh, tip of the chart, those are, those are uh, provinces that are cold enough to offer cooling for massive server farms. And as, as things like carbon taxes start to take hold, the cost of, of keeping your server farm cool will become meaningful. There's a blogger who spends a lot of time just doing these numbers, that's where I got the chart from. And so we have this opportunity here, because uh, you probably can't read the, the names here, but the, the top 10, the majority of them are, are Canadian provinces. Number one is Yukon, then there's Vermont in the US, then there's Quebec, British Columbia, Manitoba, uh, Newfoundland, Northwest Territories, then there's Washington State, Idaho, New Brunswick, Maine, and it goes further down the list. So this is a very interesting, unique opportunity. There's a guy named Bill St. Arnaud who used to uh, work at Canary, this uh, high-speed uh, network, advanced network uh, here in Canada. He blogs a lot about these opportunities. And so, yeah, I think things like uh, carbon taxes is a great opportunity for us, particularly because we also have the, the uh, major bandwidth with Canary as well, which is automatically connected to Internet 2 in the United States. So it's a very clear opportunity. Um, IT looks pretty good here in Canada, over 150,000 jobs in the next five years. Uh, what's interesting is that I was at a conference in PEI recently and I was told by um, an IT expert there that there's actually not a lot of interest. They're finding a lot of students are interested in, uh, in, in IT jobs, which is kind of unfortunate because it's obviously a great growth opportunity uh, in the next five years according to the Commerce Board of Canada. Okay, so on to the next really big thing, and this probably won't come as a surprise to any of you. But the next big thing, of course, is boom, the tablet. And uh, there's been speculation on this for at least a year. Apple has actually never admitted that they're developing a tablet, which is very interesting. Now there's a cottage industry of speculators. Um, this gentleman from Google, Lee Kai-Fu, he claims he saw the tablet, and he says that uh, 10 million will be shipped. And I don't know where he gets this information from. But what I find interesting is that there's some Canadian numbers that are compelling. Um, RBC Capital, which is a branch of the Royal Bank, they did a very interesting analysis uh, that was released this week. And it was basically projecting, you know, what kind of sales and revenue would happen at different points. And so if you look at the uh, top line there, that's based on a price point of if the tablet is sold for 500 bucks. What they're predicting is that it would be a hit. There would be uh, 10 million units would be sold. And that would mean for Apple, an additional revenue of 4.2 billion, and it's a whole new growth engine. 